laugh too hard. Welcome to Pure Power Wrestling Power Slam on Strong Spotlight. My name is Kevin Carroll. Coming to you from the German Canadian Club in Lethbridge, Alberta. Tonight, bringing you the gauntlet for the gold. The PPW Cruiserweight Championship on the line as the man you see here, the champion, the Cowboy Brinwatch, accompanied to the ring by the Stormbringer, will put that championship on the line against five other men in a six-man gauntlet match. And it looks like, as is tradition, the PPW Cruiserweight Champion, the defending champion in the gauntlet is going to kick things off, which means in order to retain that PPW Cruiserweight Championship, Bryn Watts is going to have to defeat five other competitors. It is a mountain that the Cowboy is going to have to climb, but I mean, if anyone on the PPW roster is game, it is the Cowboy, it is Bryn Watts. The man who has held that championship since September. I mean, virtually uncontested, he's defeated every other man on the PPW Cruiserweight roster. And now, he's got to go through every one of them tonight. Cowboy's first opponent here tonight in the gun for the gold. Lumberjack Larry making his debut just a few weeks ago in an incredible fatal four-way match here on Power Slam TV. And tonight he has the opportunity to walk out pure power wrestling cruiserweight champion. Lumberjack Larry, a former monster pro wrestling tag team champion and from behind. The Cowboys starting things off here with Lumberjack Larry. Give the assist to the Stormbringer, causing the distraction. Cowboy from behind with a big forearm, following it up now with a huge right hand to the jaw. Larry tries to fight back. Watts now back on top, driving Larry face first into that ring apron. He's got Larry now against the post. Gets that steel post. What does he have in mind? Charging in full head of steam. Larry out of the way. The Cowboy runs shoulder first into that post. And I mean, that may have that may have separated a shoulder early on here in this match. Woods now with a series of forearms to the chest. I, mean, I, I have to think he's going to have to try and capitalize on a potentially injured shoulder. He's got the Cowboy up. Face first into that top turnbuckle. And a second time face first again into the turnbuckle. Third time's the charm for the Lumberjack. Is he going for number four? Larry Woods, number four. And now climbing up to the second rope. Raining down the blows into the head of the Cowboy. The crowd counts along with Lumberjack Larry. Lumberjack Larry getting this crowd fired up, getting them behind him. And the Cowboy now going out to the floor. The Cowboy gonna take a break. And still may, may have separated his shoulder in the early going to this contest. Stormbringer here at ringside. The bad seeds always traveling together and you can bet the Stormbringer is going to be involved in this match more so than he already has been. And folks, as the Cowboy takes a brief break, don't forget Pure Power Wrestling returns to Lethbridge Saturday, June 15th, as the Stormbringer getting involved in this match. Disgusting display as the referee distracted. The Cowboy provides the distraction. The Stormbringer gets involved. As I was saying, PPW returns June 15th to Lethbridge, June 28th to Fort McLeod, and making our debut in Cranbrook, British Columbia, Saturday, 
June 29th as the Cowboy in complete control ever since the blindside attack by the Stormbringer. But Lumberjack Larry but now back to his feet, fighting back, and the Cowboy goes to the eyes. Cowboy goes to the eyes, desperation move. Still favoring that shoulder. Big shot to the midsection of Lumberjack Larry. Cowboy creates some separation. Builds ahead of Steam Larry though, gets the boot up, but Cowboy anticipates, sees it coming, able to catch it. Larry now, big into Jury, the kick to the shoulder, that potentially injured shoulder of the Cowboy. What the monster that as this match rolls on. Larry now, series of shots, silences the crowd. Big chop, thunderous chop, echoing through the German Canadian club. You have to figure the lumberjack, an expert in the chops, chopping down his opponent. Getting this crowd behind him, big forearm shots to the jaw. Goes for the chop. Cowboy now ducks underneath and a chop of his own. And once again, though, goes right back to that shoulder, favoring that shoulder, throws the chop, and then goes right back to favoring the shoulder. Uh, the Cowboy, he could be hurt here. We could see a new Cruiserweight Champion. How? With one good arm, is he going to make it through all five opponents here tonight? Cowboy now takes a moment to go to the fans. This may be a mistake if that shoulder's bothering him. Big shot to the back of Larry. Once again, now the Cowboy, the, the Cowboy distracting the official. Stormbringer now on top of Lumberjack Larry and wraps his knee around the post. You see the Cowboy Bryn Watts distracting our official Glenn Green, bringing him across the ring. And, I mean, nothing the official can do to something he didn't see. Side press, a very, a very cocky cover from the Cowboy. Not what I would have expected in this match. Mama Jack Larry now, I mean, he's feeling it in the knee. Cowboy driving the knee down Patella first into that mat. And now the, the ankle, the heel into the mat by the Cowboy. Cowboy taking his time. This is the methodical style we've come to expect from Bryn Watts here on Power Slam TV. Just picking apart the Lumberjacks. Every limb into the canvas. And mocking, mocking Lumberjack Larry as he does it. But look at this. This may just be firing up the Lumberjack, making him more angry. This crowd behind Lumberjack Larry. Big shot to the jaw, though. Puts the Lumberjack right back down, and the Cowboy gonna soak it in. The Cowboy gonna soak in this reaction from the PPW fans. Scoops Larry. Big scoop body slam. Puts Larry down in the center of the ring. Cowboy off the ropes. Look for the leg drop. Larry out of the way. Cowboy now, that's missing that leg drop. It's gonna send a shiver up the spine, but staying on top of Lumberjack Larry. Cowboy now again, again, taking the official, and the Stormbringer now wraps Larry's leg around the, the, the apron, the frame of the ring. The Cowboy getting into the face of our official, Glenn Green. And, I, mean, I, I cannot believe what I am seeing. Uh, uh, should we expect anything different from the Cowboy, though? Should we expect anything different than this style of offense from the bad seeds? Using the official, using everything. This numbers game to their advantage. A kick out at two from Lumberjack Larry, and there is still a lot of fight, a surprising amount of fight left in the Lumberjack. Larry now back to his feet. Fighting back on Bryn Watts, but Watts 
with that shot to the midsection. Another shot to the midsection. Big headbutt. May have scrambled his own brains a little bit. Irish whip. Lumberjack Larry ducks under. Up and down. Face first goes the Cowboy. If ever, if ever the Lumberjack had an opportunity to capitalize, ladies and gentlemen, this would be it. Larry now up to his feet. What is he doing? What, what's Larry got in mind here? Lumberjack Larry going to go up to the top rope, the high rent district. Larry off the top, looks for a leg drop, not able to catch all of it though. The Cowboy sees it coming, tries to get out of it, tries to get out of the way. It looks like Larry only able to catch him with his shins. Not able to drive the majority of the weight down and both men are down in the center of the ring. Both men down, who can get back to his feet first? You hear the Stormbringer trying to will on the Cowboy. Trying to get behind his Bad Seeds partner. Cowboy with a shot to the jaw. Lumberjack answers in kind. Another shot from the Cowboy, another one from the Lumberjack. Cowboys versus Lumberjacks here on Power Slam TV. And the Cowboy right back to the eyes. Watts goes right back to the eyes. Hooks and a suplex puts the Lumberjack down. Lateral press, no hook of the leg from the Cowboy. Kick out at two from Lumberjack Larry, and the Cowboy now gonna go up top. Cowboy, he's up on that second rope. Soaking it in from the fans. This may be a mistake, he may be taking too long to get this offense in on Lumberjack Larry. Lumberjack Larry rolling out of the way. Cowboy Bryn Watts driving that fist into the mat. Another, I mean, more damage to the arm. The Cowboy off the shoulders. Lumberjack now off the shoulders. Lumberjack Larry looking for that big spin out lariat. And the low blow from the Cowboy with the official distracted again. This time putting Lumberjack Larry in that Oklahoma Cloverleaf. Sits down on it deep, and the Cowboy gets the submission, moves on to the second round. Cowboy moves on to the second round and well, his opponent jumping Josh house of fire here. The Cowboy Bryn Watts is going to have to get through not, not just four other men, but jumping Josh to retain that PPW Cruiserweight Championship and jumping Josh coming out house of fire. A series of knees up under the jaw of the Cowboy. Josh is going to look to put things away early. Back press. Hook of the leg, the Cowboy though kicks out. Bryn Watts kicking out at two. There is a lot of fight left in the PPW Cruiserweight Champion. Josh now with the arm wrench. Series of shots here to that potentially injured arm of the Cowboy. Big spin, th that roundhouse kick to the back of the head. And, well, the Cowboy, it looks like he may be thinking about taking a walk. It looks like Bryn Watts might be thinking about taking a walk with the Stormbringer. Maybe talking strategy. Watts now back to his feet, thinking better of it. Well, there it is. Exactly as I said, Bryn Watts taking a walk with the Stormbringer. Perhaps, perhaps just leaving the ring here to discuss strategy. Get a little bit, get a little bit of his breath back. He just had a 10-minute match with Lumberjack Larry. Now perhaps looking to get that wind back. Again, 
the shoulder potentially injured, and he, uh, he's going to take a seat. Meanwhile, Jumpin' Josh pacing a lot of frustration in that in that ring. Rolling in, using the full count to his advantage, breaks the referee's count, and then once again goes for a seat. Meanwhile, Jumpin' Josh getting frustrated, and that's going to be where Jumpin' Josh begins to make a mistake. A mistake that the Cowboy can capitalize and eliminate what may be his toughest competitor here in the gauntlet for the gold. Our official up to four. Up to five now, the Cowboy's gotta get in before the 10 count or he will be counted out. Stormbringer now, it looks like we're gonna be seeing more of that numbers advantage. Distracting Jumpin' Josh. And just the distraction he needed. All the distractions that the Cowboy needed to capitalize, to take advantage, pull Jumpin' Josh's leg out from under him. And now the Cowboy gonna look to wear down the leg. He's gonna look to wear down that hamstring and that quad to make Jumpin' Josh susceptible to the Oklahoma Cloverleaf as he tosses Josh out to the floor takes the referee again and the Stormbringer driving Josh, the lower back, the small of the back, into that steel ring frame. That is a solid steel ring frame, ladies and gentlemen. And again, the three pressure points in that Oklahoma Cloverleaf. The quadricep, the hamstring, and the lower back. All three expertly worked on in the early goings of this match by Bryn Watts and of course his bad siege partner the Stormbringer as Watts with a flight and choke in front of the official Jumpin' Josh getting to the ropes not going to make much of a difference if, 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 if the Cowboys are not going to listen to the official anyway if he's not if he's just going to ignore the count it's not going to make any difference how much Jumpin' Josh gets to the ropes I, I, I'm getting disgusted here by what I've seen and again Bryn Watts taking the official for the Stormbringer to choke Jumpin' Josh across the bottom rope. I mean, I, I understand the official can only call what he can see, but are there going to be no rules in force tonight on Power Slam TV? Are there going to be no rules in force in this PPW Cruiserweight Championship match? And again, I mean, trying to intimidate our official now. Trying to intimidate Glenn Green. Uh, this, this is disgusting from both of the bad seeds. Uh, any semblance of sportsmanship out the window. Watts now drives the shoulder into the midsection of Jumpin' Josh. And I was seeing another, another blatant choke in, right in front of the official. How many of these? How many of these is the official going to allow? And, I mean, the, the attempted intimidation of a pure power wrestling official, unreal. Uh, fo folks, unreal, I apologize. I apologize for what you have to watch here. Unbelievable. The, the, the flagrant disregard for the rules, the disregard for the rule of law, and the disregard for for the authority of our official here on Power Slam TV, getting right into the face of Glenn Green, telling him he's got till five, telling him he's, he'll do whatever he wants. But at some point, the official has to enforce the rules. And what, uh, the Cowboy put his hands on the official. Jumpin' Josh looks for the roll up. And no, no, our official Glenn Green, he has seen enough. The official has seen enough. Finally going to enforce the rules. Cowboy putting his hands on Glenn Green. And there we go. Shoving the Stormbringer off the apron as well. Our official Glenn Green has seen enough. The Cowboy has been disqualified. And ladies and gentlemen, what that means is right here on Power Slam TV, you are going to see the crowning of a new pure power wrestling cruiserweight champion and I think it's finally dawned on the cowboy I think it's dawned on the cowboy that he has bent the rules he has broken the rules as much as the official will allow on Power Slam TV he has been disqualified and 
the Cowboy's out. The Cowboy is out of the gauntlet and effectively, we are guaranteed a new PPW Cruiserweight Champion tonight on Power Slam TV. And you hear these fans, you hear these fans chanting for the Cowboy. Na 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 na, hey hey hey, goodbye and good riddance to the Cow, good riddance to the Cowboy. Good riddance. And now, our next competitor here in the gauntlet for the gold, Dewey Robson. And perhaps we are going to finally see a clean, fair, down the middle, sportsmanlike competition. These two men locking up a few weeks ago in a fatal four way on Power Slam TV. And now they're going to go at it one on one in the gauntlet for the gold. One of these two men, you see the handshake. Finally, some sportsmanship in this match. I mean, one of these two men could be walking out tonight. Your new PPW Cruiserweight Champion. Circling around, collar and elbow tie up, center of the ring, side headlock by Dewey Robinson. This is a wrestling match. This is what we like to see. This is what the fans here at Lethbridge like to see. Jumping Josh, able to reverse into a side headlock of his own. He's got it in tight now. I, 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 I have to wonder how that numbers game, how going nearly 10 minutes with the Cowboy is going to impact Josh's his cardio and his ability to continue going in this match. Dewey Robson transitioning now into that side headlock. And a headlock takeover on Jumpin' Josh. Robson really working that tight side headlock. Robson has got Josh down. Josh though able to able to reverse with the cradle. Robson kicking out at two. Robson still on top, and you hear these fans behind jumping Josh. Usually a very pro Dewey Robson crowd, but they seem to be firmly behind jumping Josh here. Jumping Josh now able to use that crowd to his advantage. Works back to his feet and the bigger opponent. Dewey Robson running right through Jumpin' Josh. Robson off the ropes, Josh drops down. Using that speed to his advantage. Big hip toss takeover. Lateral press hook of the leg. A big tight hook from Jumpin' Josh. Kick out at two but transitioning seamlessly into that side headlock. Robson now, he's going to have to use that weight advantage. He's going to have to use that to get out of this side headlock. Robson now able to get back up to his feet, but still not able to break that headlock. Forces Josh into the ropes, breaks the headlock, and Josh able to use that momentum off the ropes to take down his bigger opponent. Josh off the ropes. Robson drops down, leap from Josh off the ropes again, and Robson with an arm drag to jump in. Josh dropping him really high, high on the back of the neck. But Robson holds on, not able to bar the arm, but able to hyper extend the shoulder. Doesn't have, doesn't have his arm hooked underneath the elbow of Jumpin' Josh, but he is able here to hyperextend the shoulder. This is gonna be a lot of pressure on Jumpin' Josh's shoulder. Josh now back to his feet. And Jumpin' Josh reverses into an arm ringer. Really wrenching on that arm. Big shot to the hamstring. And another roundhouse kick to the chest. He's gonna work, work Dewey Robson into the corner. Chop from Jumpin' Josh! Impressive chop! Jumpin' Josh, Irish whip reversed by Dewey Robson. Robson charges in, clothesline to Jumpin' Josh. Dewey Robson looks like he's thinking another Irish whip reversal from Jumpin' Josh. Incoming, Robson though able to get the boot up. Robson now spins through Mahestral Cradle. Very tight 
fitting predicament, but Jumpin' Josh able to kick out at two, and you see Jumpin' Josh, he rolled right to the ropes, grabbed the ropes, but Robson, with that front face lock, dragging Josh back to the center of the ring and away from the ropes. Dewey Robson, I mean, a rookie, a newcomer here in PPW, but a lot of very intelligent ring awareness from Dewey Robson. Ducks up clothesline. Dewey scoops him, jumping Josh, looking for that head scissor takedown. Dewey Robson had it scouted, able to keep his head out and drop jumping Josh with a series of backbreakers. Very, very impressive. I mean, absolutely showing off a skill level ahead of his years. Dewey Robson scouting that head scissor takedown from Jumpin' Josh and instead able to drop him with two backbreakers. And Robson now, he's got Jumpin' Josh in the ropes. We've seen this before. That 619, that tiger faint kick off the ropes. Jumpin' Josh though ducks out. Dewey Robson takes a spill. Dewey comes out of Jumpin' Josh, takes him down with a drop toe hold. Josh now off the ropes, looking for that Tiger fake kick himself. Robson able to get out of the way himself. Robson looking for the dew drop. Jumping Josh pushes him off. And Josh now rolls him up. Schoolboy, one, two, only two, only two transitioning though into that really tight, the, the cross face. The cross face, so much pressure on Dewey Robson. So much pressure on the face, on the shoulder, on the elbow. Can he get to the ropes? Josh able to reverse. Two, three, jumping Josh has eliminated Dewey Robson. Dewey Robson has been eliminated from the gauntlet for the gold. Unreal, unbelievable. Jumping Josh has eliminated. Dewey Robson from the gauntlet for the gold match. And Jumpin' Josh's next opponent making his return to Power Slam TV for the first time in nearly a year. The luchador himself, Kato, a former Pure Power Wrestling Cruiserweight Champion in his own right, one of the longest reigning PPW Cruiserweight champion Kato making his way to the ring and his return to the German Canadian Club for the first time since being locked inside of a steel cage nearly a year ago here on Power Slam TV. Kato, one of the most experienced, one of the most talented professional wrestlers in all of Western Canada, putting the mask on and he is ready to go with Jumpin' Josh here tonight. The bell sounds, we are underway in our next round. Round three of the gauntlet for the gold. Round four, sorry, of the gauntlet for the gold. My mistake, Jumpin' Josh looking for that headlock. Kato gonna have none of it, so Jumpin' Josh now, he's gonna start things off here with a series of forearms. Kato catches a punch. Catches a second punch. He's got Josh in the Greco Roman knuckle lock. He's going to use that size advantage over power jumping Josh. Foot onto the chest, looking for the cover. Jumping Josh, though, not willing to keep those shoulders down. Very cocky cover. And Kato now with a chest ring. Asking the fans if they missed him. These fans here in the German Canadian Club did not miss him. Back press, hook of the leg. Two count. And I mean, I need to take a minute to talk about the incredible stamina, the, the cardio of Jumpin' Josh. This, his third match here tonight on Power Slam TV, and able to keep up an incredible pace. Kato, Josh able to duck under, Josh able to take Kato down with a big clothesline. And an arm drag now takes Kato down a second time. Kato gonna take to the floor. Gonna take a second. Take a bit of a breather, and I mean, you have to figure, Jumpin' Josh has seen incredible growth over the last year since Kato has been here in the German Canadian Club, since he has been on an episode of Power Slam TV, and Kato, up to his old, up to his old tricks, 
Jumping Josh. He, I mean, he, he's not going to fall for this. He's not going to fall for this, is he? Oh, looks like Jumpin' Josh is going to fall for it. Kato from behind. Jumpin' Josh sees him coming. Kato ducks under the clothesline near the midsection. Jumpin' Josh is down, and Kato with that front face lock. Pops those hips. He's got Jumpin' Josh up on the ropes. I thought suplex, maybe not. He's got him elevated. Really milking that referee's count. And spins out with a... Elevated neck breaker. Kato rolls the dice with jumping Josh, and Josh is down. Kato saying he doesn't need the mask to beat jumping Josh here tonight. Back press, hook the leg. Perhaps too much time taken. Jumping Josh kicking out at two. Kato now sitting down into that camel clutch. Gonna look to put a lot of pressure on the back of Jumpin' Josh. Asks the official to check him, and now using that tail to choke Jumpin' Josh behind the referee's back. Josh tries to overpower Kato, manages to get to the ropes. But Josh has taken so much punishment in this match. I mean, in the ring, Pushing 30 minutes at this point has to be pushing 30 minutes. Jumping Josh now. Series of forearm shots to Kato. Look for that O'Connor roll. And the big back bridge. One, two, not able to put Kato away. The O'Connor roll, the back bridge, not able to put Kato away. Jumping Josh charges in. Kato setting him up and over. Incoming. Big kick to the side of the head. Kato in coming again. This time, the shoulder to the midsection. Jumping Josh, he's up. He is down with an impressive sunset flip. Is that gonna be it? One, two, three. Sunset flip puts Kato away. Jumping Josh has now eliminated the Cowboy Grin watch by disqualification. Dewey Robson and Kato, and there we see Referee Glenn Green, he's had enough. He is not going to allow these wrestlers to get into his face anymore here on Power Slam. Well, ladies and gentlemen, jumping Josh's final opponent here in the gauntlet for the gold, Ken Stevens. The former Killer B. And folks, you are looking at your new PPW Cruiserweight Champion in the ring right now. Either Jumpin' Josh or Ken Stevens is going to walk out with that belt around their waist. Ken Stevens starting things off fast here with Jumpin' Josh. A series of Irish whips. A series of big shots in the corner. Drops, drops Jumpin' Josh face first. Makes the cover. Lateral press, hook of the leg, but two count. Still only two. Still not enough to put Josh away. The former killer B, Ken Stevens. I mean, we're seeing a mean streak out of, out of Ken Stevens in the early going here, really targeting the limb of Jumpin' Josh. Didn't allow Jump and Josh, and I mean, solid strategy. Didn't allow Jump and Josh a moment to catch his breath, sprinting out here and immediately on top of Josh. Drops the elbow across the chest. And Stevens though, maybe taking a little bit too much time. And Stevens off the ropes. Looks to drop a knee, nobody home. Jump and Josh out of the way. Is Jump and Josh going to be able to capitalize though? Josh back up. You hear those forearm strikes. Stevens cuts jumping Josh back off. Now picking him up off the mat. Irish whip reverse from jumping Josh. Josh throws a clothesline. Stevens ducks underneath. He's got him hooked. Big backbreaker. And I mean. You could say that Dewey Robson worked on the back. You could see that you could say that the camel clutch of Cato worked on the back. 
But at this point in the match, this deep in the gut for the gold, honestly, every part of Jumpin' Josh must be screaming out in pain. The lactic acid buildup, and I mean, Josh, how much could he possibly have left? How could he possibly overcome Ken Stevens in this match? Stevens has got Jumpin' Josh down, heading up now to the second row. Stevens gonna look to put him away. No water in the pool, though. Jumpin' Josh gets out of the way. All of Stevens' 172 pounds driven Patella first into the mat. And if Jumpin' Josh ever had an opportunity, this is it. This is his last best opportunity off the ropes big tiger fake kick the boot to the top of the head of ken stevens and jumping josh now is he gonna is he gonna go is he gonna fly is josh gonna jump josh he's up to the top perhaps thinking better of it going to the middle rope josh has got to be hurting He's got to be feeling it. Big drop kick to the chest of Ken Stevens. Jumping Josh firing up. Making the cover. Side press. Only two, not enough to put Ken Stevens away. Stevens fights back. Stevens now with a series of shots. Jumping Josh answering, and these two men, they are just gonna duke it out in the center of the ring over that PPW Cruiserweight Championship. Two men, but only one can become Cruiserweight Champion. Big boot from Ken Stevens. Big cover, and Jumping Josh able to grab the bottom rope at the last possible second. I mean, Ken Stevens, he has to be asking, what do I have to do to put this kid away? One of the toughest members of the PPW roster. Well, Stevens says this is gonna be it. Looking for a big DDT. Jumping Josh though, he's fighting. Josh fights out. He, he's got Stevens down. He's worn him down. Big cross face from Jumping Josh. And is that gonna be enough? Is that gonna be it? Stevens trying to hold on. Tries to reverse, jumping Josh the roll through. He's still got the cross face locked in. Stevens so far from the ropes. And Stevens has no choice but to submit. Ken Stevens tap out. Jumping Josh, your winner of the gauntlet for the gold and your new pure power wrestling cruiserweight champion. Unreal. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. You're new. Well, well, the cowboy you see in the corner of your screen there, Bryn Watts. Bryn Watts interrupting the celebration. The new PPW Cruiserweight Champion, Jumpin' Josh. Well, well, Bryn Watts, I mean, he's got the, he's got the rule book in his hand. He's got an official. He's got our senior official, Curtis Barnum. I mean, Jumpin' Josh won. The gauntlet for the gold by submission, ladies and gentlemen. There's no question here. Bryn Watts eliminated by disqualification earlier in the night. I mean, I, the rule book in hand. You see Jumpin' Josh, he's got the championship belt. Cowboy's got the rule book in hand and our senior official. What? Well, what are we seeing here, ladies and gentlemen? Our senior official Curtis Barnum calling calling Super Dave Ransom over and well I think from my vantage point I think I, from my vantage point I, I may have just heard the cowboy proclaiming that the rule book states. The rule book states that a championship cannot change hands. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the, 
I mean, I will admit the rule book clearly states that a championship cannot change hands by way of disqualification, but come on! Jumpin' Josh eliminated four men! He eliminated four men of the gauntlet for the gold and has that Cruiserweight Championship ripped from his hands! The championship that he earned here tonight ripped from his hands by the PPW officials and uh, 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 enforcing the rules as they are written, the letter of the law, but not definitely not the spirit of the law. Jumpin' Josh, and he's seen enough! Jumpin' Josh has had enough! Cowboy Bryn Watts has spent six months tormenting Jumpin' Josh, holding that Cruiserweight Championship over his head, and Josh has had enough. Puts the Cowboy down, goes up to the top rope, and there we go! Drives the feet through the heart, through the black heart of the Cowboy Bryn Watts. And I'm sorry, I, I'm supposed to stay impartial here, but, but I mean, I am... I have to agree with Jumpin' Josh. I have seen enough over the last six months making this kid's life miserable. You gotta earn it, buddy. I mean, what's Jumpin' Josh got on his mind here? It's gotta be a lot. Jumpin' Josh, who knows how long you've been a snake in my boot? Voice is in the squeaky there. I even be Stormbringer, and then I beat you again. So, the only way that I'm going to take that belt from him is if I do it myself. So here's an idea. On Saturday, June 15th, let's hang out above the ring and have ourselves a ladder match. Well, Jumpin' Josh laying down the challenge the only way I'm gonna get that belt from you is if I pull it down myself Saturday, June 15th. Let's hang up the belt and let's have a ladder match. The Cowboy cannot believe what he's seeing. Cannot, he can't believe it. The Cowboy, I mean, his championship reign may be flashing before his eyes here tonight on Power Slam TV. For Pure Power Wrestling, my name is Kevin Farrell. Thank you for joining us, and please tune in next week.